recently went to Stonehenge in the UK, there, England. It was uh, a couple weeks ago, December 22nd, 2018. Checking out the stones of Stonehenge. Fabulous place. You got a chance. Everybody's got to go. It's a pilgrimage. Go see the big stones and um, the alignments. Uh, we had it was a uh, a rare occurrence where you had the full moon and the winter solstice at the same the same day. Very very unusual. So uh, being a moon guy, I actually had to go and check it out. So I flew over there from the United States and uh, did some research. I came up with a couple of couple of um, you know concepts, ideas on what some of these stones are doing. You can see the clouds up above there that was actually uh, mimicking the stones on the ground. You can see the vertical vertical clouds, so a little anomaly with the clouds there. And um, the moon wasn't quite up up yet, so that's you know so that's a potential. It was it was definitely pulling down at that alignment because it wasn't over the horizon yet. I'll save that for another video. It's another uh, shot of the beautiful people there checking it out. That large one in the, in the middle is called the Tenon. And we're going to get into uh, that, that uh, how that um, actually uh, ties into the Gateway of the Sun down in Tiwanaku, Peru. Or is it Bolivia? I think, it's, yeah, I think it might be Bolivia. Well, whatever. Um, this is a uh, plaque showing the uh, winter solstice. You see the red dotted line going right straight through. Kind of goes on the right hand side of the tenon and lands on the hailstone, which is outside the circle by some quite, by maybe uh, 50 yards. And uh, it shadows. When it comes down to the moon and the sun, uh, we're, we're, we're working with shadows. This is how uh, this is how readings are taken. This is instrumentation. Best inst instrumentation is on the ground when it comes to uh, uh, you know monitoring the uh, tilt and the uh, speed of the Earth and its orbit around the Sun and the uh, metonic cycle. So, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Here's the uh, the stone in question is the stone 68th, and um, as you can see, there's a, a it's it's got two uh, lobes, vertical lobes on the uh, outside, and a, and a deep groove on the center a center line in the middle there. You get a better picture of it. Here's a better picture of it there, and it's actually casting a shadow inside the crack. Now, if it was like say pointed directly at the solstice, winter solstice, or uh, summer solstice, or the equinox, there would be no shadow at all. It would be completely illuminated deep into the crack, okay, right into the uh, vertical groove. And also the top, as you notice, the top of that stone is actually, um, you know, one piece. It's that the the uh, groove doesn't go all the way through the whole stone. It, it stops up at the top. So that also is casting a shadow on another stone. Now, I don't think that's in the right place, you know? I don't think that stone's in the right place, but, um, or it's, well, it's definitely leaning anyway, so it's not, it's not, uh, you know, doing the job that it was designed to do because it's in a uh, precarious position, as you'll see. So this is, um, you know, something that we have to work on and uh, maybe, uh, uh, write that back up and point it at either an equinox or or the, uh, the solstice so we can get a uh, yeah, better it's instrumentation so you can actually track the shadow all year you know for half a year and uh, you, you could come up to it at any any point of the uh, any day of the year and, and know which way the sun's going and how how much closer you got to go before you get to it without even looking at a calendar so it's a pretty fascinating piece of stone as far as I'm concerned. There's the uh, Gateway of the Sun in uh, Tiwanaku. Now this this particular um, gateway is four degrees off. It is at the uh, it's at 19.4 degrees um, it's where the Sun would come up. Like if we had a tilt of 19.4 degrees compared to our 23 and a half right now, four degrees off, the Sun would rise up in the uh, 
and the solstice or the equinox and um, one of the two I forget which one it is but hey I, uh, I think it's a solstice so so anyways that that just there's more evidence that there is a uh, you know a, uh, an ice age tilt that we go into and um, it's approximately I would suggest 19.4 I got this information from uh, Graham Hancock in one of his talks down there in uh, Bolivia or Peru. I, you know, it was on video anyway, so thank you, Graham. Going forward, we got uh, Thoth up in the top here. He's sitting up on the uh, the tenon, the largest stone. And um, this uh, this stone is, is lined up with the heel stone. <coughs> in in the 19.4 uh, degrees it's actually perfectly lined up with it so the sun would actually set right over where the bird is felt is uh, the crow uh, sitting sitting on top of the uh, the point there pretty fascinating uh, this is a good outline of you know the stones here and uh, stone 68 stone 68. Yeah, uh, uh, see if the uh, oh geez, these new LCD screens, they just absorb the laser beam. Stone 68 is over, over here, okay? And the tenon is right here, this big black one. And that's the hill stone. So right now it's coming to the right of it. On the, on the solstice, it comes to the right of that, right there. And um, that's at a 23 and a half degree, 23.4 degree tilt of the Earth. And once we go into the Ice Age tilt, it's going to be, it'll actually come right in the center of that. It's four degrees off, and it lands right in the center of it. So there's a lot of speculation out there that there's other, there was other, uh, another stone there, and, and I'm sure there was, because why, why go through all the trouble of putting a, a giant um, crown on it? So, attached to a lintel piece, but um, let's see the here and there. So I, I put some lines on there. They're not like, you know, perfectly accurate, but four degrees actually goes into the dead center of that, um, that stone. And then you can see there's another stone in front here also. So that's definitely, I would say, evidence that there is um, you know, an ice age correlation between this, uh, this whole site, which I'll get into uh, another video, I'll get into uh, what, I'm, what I'm, you know, getting from this site and what my ideas are, why it, why it was put together and all these uh, barrows and long barrels and round barrows and circle barrels and everything else. So there's the heel stone. Like I said, it's about 50 yards, uh, uh, to the north, slightly to the northeast there, and um, I don't know if it's like 50, 60 degrees, uh, well anyways, um, yeah, so that's, that's off from, uh, that's off, but you can see the tenon, you can see the top point of the tenon with the bird, I think the bird's still up there, this bird was off a trip that day, he's just flying around having a good old time, you know, soaking it up. And uh, join the uh, the sites. Always something interesting going on when you go to these sites. So, anyways, uh, just a recap. You know, this this stone right here is is in my mind instrumentation. You, you don't go to all that trouble to you know, hone and carve uh, this this type of material. Just because uh, you know it's it's uh, something to do with your board. It's a Sunday, and you want to make time pass. So obviously, you can see the you can see the shadows working in there. And uh, you know, I I think it's it might be pointed to the uh, equinox. I'm not too sure. You can't get to these things. I mean, you have to have you know uh, uh, some kind of uh, private access. Pay a bunch of money and and. Um, uh, you know, check that's for these uh, to get in there and do some real uh, measurements. So hey, I know this. I know I'm, I'm just a newcomer at the uh, the hands here. So I'm just putting my ideas out. You know, it's a collective consciousness, not a competition. And uh, you know, obviously there's there's something going on here. 
with these alignments in this stone, but as you can see this is a full top up here. The groove doesn't go all the way through. It just stays there. And then you have a shadow. And uh, it's almost, so the sun's probably coming in at this angle. It's probably, you know, pretty close to, you know, a, uh, a summer uh, or a, a, a equinox. Because I think that's what it's pointed at. But it's not, I don't think it's, I don't think, it's not anywhere close to the, uh, an exact equinox. Now, that all being said, maybe at 19 in a, in a quarter, 19.4 degree pitch, um, tilt rather, the earth tilt, it might have lined up perfectly. So, that's probably what's going on there. Anyways, it's a short video, 10 minutes, there's not much really, not much really to add to it. Just putting out an idea, a concept. I don't think I'll get the Nobel Peace Prize for it. Or to get run out of town, but and also you can see a face right behind here. It's pretty trippy. You know, got the two eyes, got the two eyes here, the mouth, the nose. You know, I mean these stones. A lot of these stones have faces on them. I mean you could you could see they're they've uh, eroded. So there was a, must have been a real colorful place back in the day. Again, it's all about the shadows. This, this is the instrumentation. This is the readings you're getting on these shadows. And, um, you know, you, you line up the planets with the stars, uh, the constellations. You know, and unbeknownst to uh, mainstream science, uh, there's planets in the solar system, and they do have an effect on our environment here on Earth, you know. It's a real uh, huge discovery going on out there in the real world. Um, you know, as far as earthquake, volcanic activity, tidal waves, floods, you know, uh, biblical proportion stuff too, beyond biblical proportions. So, all right, I got a couple of books, Pyramid Gravity Force, and uh, as a website, and also wrote a book with my esteemed colleague, uh, Wendy Salter, and we, uh, we got a book here called There Is Something About the Moon. And, uh, you know, it's good stuff, a lot of, uh, lot of new concepts, a lot of ideas, a lot of discoveries based on physical, acceptable, repeatable evidence and today's science. So if you're interested in this type of stuff, check it out. Also tells you why uh, we go in and out of the ice age. It's actually uh, mechanics, I'm, unlike uh, most of the other uh, theories out there, there's no mechanics, it's just uh, theories without any evidence or any uh, physical evidence, but that's that's science, you know, you just go on with what you have. So anyways, hit me up with some uh, comments, likes, um, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. John Shaughnessy here at your service.